Hi, I'm Alex Jordan from Long Color Grading and FilmSimplified.com and today we're going to be taking a look at a couple of tracking tricks in um, DaVinci Resolve that you probably didn't know that will make your life much easier. Let's start. Tracking in Resolve is magic. You simply add a window, place the window, whatever you want, change the size of the window. I'm just hitting a shortcut key here and it will just track like it's just unbelievable. However, sometimes you will run into trouble based on the scene you're trying to track and the portion of the scene that you're trying to track. For example, here I have this footage. Notice that when the camera moves, there's a parallax effect to the right of the scene. First, we have this section in front and this section in the back. Notice that when the camera moves, these sections move at different speeds. So the objects in the front are moving much faster than the objects in the background. This simply means that if I add a window, so I'll simply come here, add a window and maybe position it this way. And simply I'll just come to the tracker, track forward and notice what's happening. The tracker doesn't really know where to focus on. So now we just tilted the tracking window, which is not something you might want to do. So let's continue tracking backwards. And again, look at the window, how it's moving. That's simply because the window does not know where to focus. Should it focus on the front? So it's trying to follow the objects in the front or should it focus only on the back? And this is where the first two tricks come in. Let's take a look at the first one. Let's reset, add the window and adjust it to its own position. And now I'm going to do a very simple trick. I'm going to make the window much smaller. So I'll just really make the window small and make it focused only on a very small area. Note that the area inside this smaller circle will be tracked. So now we just told the tracker to ignore the objects in the front and only track the background. So let's go to tracking and track forward and notice how it's just only tracking the background now and ignoring the foreground entirely. And let's track backwards and it's the same thing. So now we have a much better tracking data. However, we have a problem now. The window is much smaller. It's tracking only a portion of the image, not the entire image. Well, just make sure that in the tracker window, you're selecting clip mode. And now you can simply change the size of the window to any size you want. So I'll just change the window size. And now notice that even though I changed the window size, the window is still tracking the background and ignoring the foreground because all the tracking data here were performed while the window was smaller and it only covered this area. So when you're tracking, you can make the window smaller track any object you want or maybe a part of the scene that you want and after that you can change the size of the window to any size you want and it will still be locked to the area it originally tracked so now even if i move the window to the left side notice that it's still moving with this area here actually i can change its size move it to this side and it will still be tracked to the original size so that was the first solution let's take a look at another solution reset i'll add a new window maybe just come to this part here and again change its size and now i want to repeat this same thing. I just want to uh, track the background without the foreground, but I don't want to change the size of the window for any reason. Let's take a look at another solution. In the tracker, I have this section to the bottom. I'll activate it by clicking here, activating interactive mode. I have these tracking markers appearing on the screen. These markers, they tell you what features in this image will be tracked. It just looks at, uh, you know, what's inside the window and decide, you know, these points are the points I'm going to be tracking. Note that some of the tracking points are on the uh, background while other tracking points are on the foreground. Well, it's pretty simple. I need to delete the tracking points that are on the foreground, basically telling Resolve to ignore it. I can do that by simply clicking and dragging. So now I just selected these points and then I can simply click this icon here to delete all of the points selected. So I click the icon and notice that all the points here disappeared. Now, if I track forward, notice that Resolve will only focus on the background and it will completely ignore the foreground and back to this point and track backwards and it's much better. And now to the third trick the point tracker. I'll add a window here and again just the same window with the same area and now I don't want to use the uh, full power of the tracker because the tracker here tracks rotation, size, 3D, it, it tracks many things and sometimes you want to track a very specific feature, just a point like an eyeball or something. Well in that case you can use the point tracker. I'll come to the tracker here and notice that to the bottom right of the tracking window I have this drop down menu. It currently says cloud tracker. So the tracker we're using now now is the cloud tracker. I can open this drop down menu and switch it to point tracker. This simply allows us to track a point, just one point on the screen. First, I need to select the point or tell Resolve what point 
to track. I can use this button here. I'll click it. And once I clicked it, I have this plus sign added to the monitor. So I can hold this plus sign and move it around. I'll click here and maybe I'll just place it on this point here, for example. So now we have this one point. I'll simply hit track forward as usual. And now we're tracking a single point rather than the advanced tracking system that Resolve uses. This is still pretty advanced, but now we're focusing only on one point on the screen. This is very beneficial if you have a very complex scene with a lot of moving stuff and you just want to track one thing. You just want to track an eyeball, something very small on the scene maybe, and you just want to make sure to be able to track that one thing. This will work magic. Let's take a look at one more trick. I'll reset everything, add a new window, and now we have this window here, and I'll track, for example, her movement. So I'll just place it here, track forward, now, let's say I need to add another window, for example, for a similarly moving object in the screen. So I'll simply come to windows here and maybe add this time a linear window, for example. So this is another window. Let's move this window here. And let's say that I don't want to track this window again. I already have all the tracking data in the uh, first window. So I can simply copy the tracking data from one window to another, even across nodes if you want it. So I'll select the first window. So this is the window that is tracked. I'll go to tracker and using these three Three dots to the right here, I'll click. And here I have these two options, copy track data and paste track data. So I'll click here to copy it. And then I'll select the other window by clicking on it. I know it's selected because it's much brighter than the window that is not selected. So while this window is selected, I'll simply click the three dots here and select paste track data. And now the same tracking data is applied to the other window. Notice how they both move even in 3D space the same way. This can be very beneficial if you want to add another node and you added a window and you already tracked something, you don't want to go back and track it and you want both windows to match 100%, you can simply copy and paste tracking data even across multiple nodes. So for example, I'll add a new node here and maybe I'll add a window now to her face, for example. So even though this is a different node, I'll simply open the tracker window, open the three dots and select paste tracking data. And notice that now we have the same tracking data applied. And remember, just like from the first trick, because we are on clip mode, we can move this window to a different location without any problem. Notice how now we changed the position of the window and it's still tracking perfectly. The last trick here is to simply ignore the tracker entirely. If you have something very simple between two or three points in the image, you can simply place your window manually very easy. Let's add a window here, for example, to this part of the image. And now notice something very interesting. I'll switch to the tracking window. From these controllers, I'm currently selecting clip. I'll switch now to frame. Frame simply remembers the position of this window at this point in time. So notice what will happen here once I move the window. A new point was created. So now I have a new point added. This point remembers all the properties of this window at this point in time. So now let's move the playhead to this part here and change the position of the window. For example, I'll move it to the right. However, before I move it, just make sure to keep your eye on this area here. I'll move the window and notice that a new point was created. This point now will remember the position of this window at this particular point in time. And now if I play between these two points, notice that the window is moving, it's changing its position from this point to this point, and I can add as many points as I want to. For example, at this point in time, I want the window to be here. Notice how simple things are. You don't even need to create a new keyframe or anything. You just move to a certain position, move the window, and now the window will just keep on changing its position between these points. I believe these tricks will make tracking much easier for a lot of starting filmmakers. If you like this, please visit us at filmsimplified.com where you can join our free DaVinci Resolve crash course that is designed for the absolute beginner and will take you through every tab in Resolve. Thank you. Filmsimplified.com